Hey there guys, so I got asked what's the point of um, having a YouTube channel. Um, everyone, you know, comes down to what they wanted to do. My long-term goal was um, to eventually get into the AdSense program um, and to also just put out a whole lot of, you know, training information, just help people, you know, get better at the sport that they enjoy. Um, I also like the fact, you know, training at home, a lot of people think a commercial gym is sort of the only way to get strong. Versus, you know, I find the practicality of having stuff at home is so much easier. Um, I enjoy training at home a lot as well. Especially when you get to invite, invite mates over. Um, you can control the music. You can control who's there. Um, you can minimize anything that sort of annoys you. Um, and other simple things like, you know, today's a nice day. We're going to train. Um, mates are coming over at about 3 p.m. And once we sort of finish training or towards the end of it, we just um, order some pizza and, you know, finish off what we need to do and, and enjoy. Um, and the other big thing, like some commercial gyms don't like it when you bring your kids in. I'm fortunate that the gym that I coach you at, um, they're really, really good in that regard. You know, they're more than happy for me to bring my son or for me to bring, you know, the littlest one who's only 14 months old. So um, in that, you know, regard, I'm very, very lucky. And it's probably one of the few gyms that sort of allows that. They have a very... Um, family-based, loyalty-based, um, let's say, mindset. And, you know, their facilities are just immaculate as well um, versus you go to some of the other gyms and you get a lot more of the, um, let's say, the harder characters, you know, in powerlifting and bodybuilding and things like that. And it's not always the best um, family, you know, atmosphere, especially when they're, you know, swearing a lot versus, you know, where I train, there's very, very few, you know, individuals like that. And they're really quite level-headed. And a lot of them um, have some pretty decent professions behind them. But, um, you know, that's digressing a bit. But coming back to, you know, why I make the channel, um, I want people to see what they can do at home. And the fact that you can build a quality garage gym on a very, very cheap budget. You know, one of the, the staples, you know, if you don't have enough to buy, you know, a power rack, you can build one. Um, if you're going to get a bar, get a good quality bar, but you know, simpler things before that, like a set of the Olympic spin lock dumbbells, you know, they take the Olympic sized plates and there is a lot of things you can do with, um, dumbbells. You know, you've got your overhead work, your rows, um, you can hold them and do, you know, goblet squats. You can hold, you know, one each hand, you can do farmer's walks, heavy shrugs. If you just buy a, um, dip attachment belt. You know, you can thread the dumbbells that way, stand on, you know, two boxes and do some really heavy box squats with, you know, the, the dumbbells suspended. Um, you know, if you want to, for bench press, you can either do um, dumbbell floor press. If you're, if you're really tight on cash, go to like your local, you know, shopping center and speak to a few of the um, retailers that are throwing away like the milk crates to get a few of those. And, you know, you lay some board over the top and you've got yourself a very cheap makeshift um, bench. Or if you want to be more creative and want something a little more unique, you could find a giant log and just, you know, level the top of it and make it perfectly flat. And you're going to have a unique flat bench as well. Um, the other thing that I like is the natural stones. Really, really cheap. I just picked them up from a landscaping place. Um, I have had a lot of fun playing around with the natural stones. And, you know, there's a really long uh, history of, you know, stone lifting. So um, it's good to see where you stack up compared to, you know, what people used to do and what was required. Um, other things for like a garage gym, sandbags, you can make your own, you know. I got a few of the Hessian bags and instead of using sand, I actually used gravel. And the logic behind that was if my sandbag broke, I'd rather clean up gravel than clean up sand. Because sand would be a bit of a nightmare, but gravel's not too bad at, at all. And, you know, you just double bag or triple bag them. Um, what else that's that's pretty much it bench press that i've already touched on if you have the money get a you know really good quality bench press when it comes to plates apart from the ones that you're going to put on like the olympic spin lock dumbbells um i'd always go calibrated i'd just pay that little bit extra money if you need to sell them later on you get a really good price back um sometimes you know they, they barely drop in price if you buy them second hand from someone then you can literally sell them for the same price that you you got them for um the reason I say, you know, calibrated plates apart from, you know, the return on investment, like, you know, if you've got to sell them later on, um, is, you know, if you're competing in powerlifting, it's nice to know that your lifts are really, really accurate. So I'd say, you know, quality 
plates and a quality bar. Power racks, you know, as long as your rack is solid, um, I don't care, you know, if it's you know, a commercial one or the one that I made out of timber. Um, I built mine out of Cypress with um, 125 by 75 um, mil thick uh, posts and they're, you know, you're not gonna crack it. It's just, you know, ridiculously strong. And, you know, building a cheaper power rack, I'd rather do that than dump all the money into, you know, a quality bar and weight plates because the bar and the weight plates are the things that are going to really impact your lift. You know, if you're walking out the weight from a squat rack, it doesn't matter if it's a squat rack or squat stands, um, you're walking the weight out and ideally you don't want to be failing your reps. If you want to train to failure, do it on like another exercise, do it on like lunges where you're holding the dumbbell and you can safely fail. Um, you know, that's sort of my take on it as well. You could go to a gym and, you know, use the leg press and rep out to failure or the belt squat and rep out to failure. Um, a lot of people aren't going to go very, very heavy in a garage gym in terms of top singles because they like having a spotter, so maybe do that at a gym. But um, yeah, I just, you know, enjoy training at home. And that was sort of one of the reasons why I put this channel together. Um, I had the, the channel for a very long time just sitting there doing pretty much um, nothing because, you know, I used to watch YouTube and watch other people's videos and subscribe. So I had the account and I figured I might as well do something with it. So, um, yeah, if you guys have any questions or, you know, video topics you want me to touch on, uh, comment below. Otherwise, have a great day wherever you are.